everybody. So excited to have you all here today. I'm Tanya Hoffman. I'm the CEO and founder of the Public Speakers Association and the Career Speaker Academy. And I'd love to bring you lots of value and get you connected to amazing people like my guest Tim today. If you would like to join in, um, we've got open seats. We're talking about getting your message heard. Um, you know, that's what's so great about Tim. He helps people get their message heard. He's got a radio show and he's out there speaking, spreading his message and really connecting to a lot of people. Same for me, you know, I love it. I mean, L with like capital L. Uh, when I see people first starting out, right? When you're just getting going as a speaker and really people, I mean, what we're doing here, we're a speaker here. I mean, today's definition of what a speaker is doesn't mean that you have to be in front of a thousand people. It could be that you're just you know, in front of 20 lovely people at a networking group or a mommy's group or whatever, you know, you could be on here, you could be on Periscope, um, YouTube, you know, on radio shows, TV shows, whatever. Um, it, but it's about getting that message heard because everybody has incredible information, lives that I've lived. I can't live your life. You can't live mine. I learned things that you haven't learned yet and vice versa. Tim's learned some things that I'm like, oh my gosh, thank you for letting me know and vice versa. So it's about getting that information out to the world. What do you think, Tim? Do you, you feel that way too? Yeah, I, I do. I'm sitting here answering texts from Robert Stern, who's in the room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Robert, Robert if just, you want to come on, you're more than welcome to join us. <laughs> he's actually, he's got something going on and he can't jump in, he said, but I mean, he's, oh, okay. he's, he's the guy I wanted to connect you with. So he's a great, 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 become a great friend of mine. So I'm Perfect. trying to make sure my wife picks up the peanut brittle from his house. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, he's really going to laugh. Um, <laughs> That's wife, when you know you've got really good friends when they make you peanut brittle and, and give you no, some. <laughs> uh, no. Um, yes, I scooped already, Robert. I just got up and, and um, got my cup of coffee and I sent a text to him because we got him and I got to talk today. Um, but I seen that you were on, on so I, I clicked in and, and I, I, I'm always here to help. So when you said, hey, Tim, grab a seat, I grabbed a seat to help you. Um, as you said, the, the voice isn't, but... Hey, getting your, <laughs> yeah, getting your message out there is so important, as you were talking about, Tanya. And, um, you know, I, I was in a discussion with this uh, the other day, and, and I don't remember where it was. It could have been on here. But we're talking about, I'll speak to an audience. I don't care what the size is. When you right. go on, uh, when you show up at some event and you're asked to speak or you're asked to be, asked to share, all right, there is somebody there that's, that, that's going to resonate with you. You asked me to jump in here. Maybe somebody who you know that I don't needs to hear something stupid I did to go, oh, I can speak in an event if Tim can do it. You know? I don't exactly. know. Exactly. People always up. think that, you know, speakers are these miraculous people that have these special powers or something that they don't have. No. And I, I showed everybody yesterday. Okay, so I have to show it again because I've got new show people it. on today. So people have a hard time believing that I haven't always been this blonde. <laughs> I'm sure Tim, he was telling us that he hasn't always had such lovely locks of hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of times, oh, here comes Robert. A lot of times, okay. too, Aaron. Aaron is, Aaron. you know, when you look at that, that progression, getting your message out, it was really hard for me at the beginning. And I don't know if Robert's been this way and Tim, you know, I know you've had different experiences, but I was an extreme introvert. And this is a picture of me in 2005. Okay, people, 2005, 10 years ago, this is how much I've progressed. So I was a complete introvert. I would go through an entire day without saying one word to one person. That's how introverted I was. And I felt like, what do I have to share? How could I help people? Why would anyone want to know who I am? Why would anyone want to hear my message? And then I started pushing myself. So this is me, 2005. <laughs> At the Leander Chamber of Commerce Holiday Gala, this is what I would wear to the gala. Can you believe it? So obviously I've been really changing and pushing myself into personal development. Have you had that kind of experience, Robert? I've had that all my life. 
<laughs> I've been in sales all my life in commission. So it's, it's the only way if you're selling either you if you're a salesperson or if you have your own business, you're constantly like that. You, if you're not, you're not going to be doing well. Mm -hmm. You've got to get your exactly. message out. Like you're saying, you know, with your title and, and just being out there, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's in person, whether it was on social media, whether it was on blab now or, or Periscope or meerkat, doesn't matter. You got to keep getting it out there. Yeah, you know, and one of the things that was a real shock for a lot of people is I've owned businesses since I was 25. I had two retail stores in Houston for seven you know years. We did two years. Uh, you're so good. I love you. <laughs> yes, I'm 27. <laughs> Mine is 20 years. <laughs> it's okay. But, you know, you know, a lot of people are like, well, you had retail stores, you were out there, how could you be an introvert? But in retail stores, people are coming into you. You're not really putting yourself yeah, okay. out there. Yeah. So it's different nowadays, you know. I think I want to do it. I want to do a thing, Robert, on the idea of, uh, you know what I mean? I know this is a Christian thing, not the, the Jewish, but it could be, I think, some, it may be in yours, but God somewhere in the in the Bible, and I don't know whether it was Old Testament or New Testament. That's why I brought this up. I don't know whether it was Old Testament or New <laughs> Testament. There is nowhere that he says, put up a stand and people will come to you. He says, go and tell. All of us. I don't care what business you're in. You've got to go and tell. Moses Moses did it. All of yeah. them did it. They had yeah, to go I mean, talk to the people. Yeah. I mean, that's I, I, I wasn't doing that to separate the, the religions, but the, I mean, the idea of the, yeah. the, the it, is that it was in the Bible and like you and I are separate re religion, separate backgrounds, but that was in there and it was told to us. And I think it was told in the old Testament. We were twins probably that were like separated at birth and one down to the <laughs> South of Dallas and I'm up in New York. And so we don't really know which religion we started with. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Bye Tracy. <laughs> um, parent dome wrote down that, uh, that was the apostle Paul. Paul. So Paul. Okay. So, I mean, but think about it. I'm, I'm thinking about doing a thing on that, and it's not about – because it's about speaking, Tony, and your message, right. all right? Or if – I used to have a car wash business. I didn't sit at my house and wait for people to call me for that business. I went <laughs> out, all right? And that's that's yeah. how I built that business was I was out and networking and knocking on doors and, you know, buying coffee yeah. at Starbucks for people to build relationships, well, you know, one of the things that I had to get over is that that head game, right, of, mm -hmm. you know, why would someone, you know, A, want to hear me, and then are they going to be ugly when I say something, right? And I remember walking into Starbucks, and I looked around, I'm like, oh, my gosh, here's like 30 people sitting here that doesn't know me. Mm -hmm. I could change their life today. I have information that will, could really make a difference in their business, and – but yet I wouldn't open my mouth up. So yeah. I started using um, this little trick on my head because I hate being selfish. That's one of the things that just really gets me you know, upset when someone says that I'm being selfish ever yeah. since I was a little girl. So I started telling myself when I walked in, I was like, all right, Tanya, don't be selfish today. Go and change somebody's life. Mm -hmm. Connect them to somebody that will make a difference. And that is the way I started pushing myself out of that introvertness Mm -hmm. to where I could just start talking to people and then moving myself in front of a crowd. The first crowd was five lovely ladies who all loved me. Mm -hmm. You know, who cares? They all were there to support me. But yeah, I was shaking and shivering and sweating and, uh, you know, blabbering and couldn't get anything out, you know. And I was like, okay, I'm 38 years old at that time, 10 years ago. I'm like, I have got to make a difference. I have got mm -hmm. to get over my issues so I can go change somebody's life. Yeah. Did, did either the, of you have issues like that? I was like going to say, with all the people that recently have just come in, do you want to explain who you are again? Oh, sure. Hey, hello, everybody. I'm <laughs> Tanya Hoffman. I'm the CEO and founder of the Public Speakers Association, Career Speaker Academy. And then also I have a TV show on YouTube. It's called Tanya Hoffman's Fabulous TV Show. You'll see the fabulous Tim Gillette on that. I'd love to have you sure. on there, Robert, sometime. <laughs> I'll, I would gladly do it as long as Tim's not on at the same time. Okay. Deal. We're competing for squares, all right, right now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. 
Yeah, so you, she hasn't seen me and you just like straight out. To no, she hasn't. <laughs> I can handle pretty much almost anything. The only thing that I can handle that I've got two rules in any of my organizations is that you have to be nice. No mean, grumpy, negative people. Oh, we're and, out. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we're not out. And then the other yourself. one is that you can't be perfect. And I know Tim uh, totally agrees with that. Uh, one. <laughs> I agree with that one. Yeah. So, <laughs> Uh, no, we're, uh, you know, I can say that truthfully, Robert and I have become friends through Blab over the last couple of days and we joke up and we kid up and stuff like that. But we both know as friends, I, I'd hop on a plane and come up there for him in a heartbeat. You know what I mean? And we're already trying to waiting. Talking. Still waiting. <laughs> My wife's in Trenton. She's coming by to get the uh, peanut brittle. She's coming by. Okay. I don't know. I don't, she's in Trenton right now. I should. I'll talk to you later. Today. It's over two hours for me. I know. I didn't think. I didn't think you were at, that far south. So no, no. I'm 20 yeah. miles outside New York West. Yeah, New she's. City, so. And I think she. I don't know. I think she's going into uh, going up to. Um, uh, she. I think she's flying on a jersey today to go to, to Ohio. You know, it's interesting because when we start going different places, like I'm heading to Oregon um, tomorrow, and mm -hmm. then I headed to California right after that, you know, and you get to start connecting to people and mm -hmm. you realize how small this world is. I was in really California is. not too long ago, met someone in Massachusetts that now we're like, you know, best of friends. It's just amazing how small this world is, you know, especially using, you know, platforms like this. Mm -hmm. Well, I was talking with Gwen last night, and I said, because of this platform, as well as connections I've made at live events, um, I may have to look into going to uh, Australia. Yeah. I'm connecting with a lot of people in Australia right now. I've got and a guy was, who's going to be putting on a conference, so I'll connect you to him. Yeah. I'm actually going out there next May. Yeah, you are. I'm doing nice. Periscope Summit, and I'm going to put on one of mine also. Oh, nice. Um, I'm going to go there. I'm going to extend the stay and I suppose do a one day workshop. And well, that's it. I just it? get the money to come back home from that. Airport. That's right. <laughs> yeah. For me, well, I do that is, because the belt, that's it. Yeah. And this is a concept that a lot of people have a hard time with is when you go do something, don't look at it as a one time off type of event, create mm -hmm. something around that. You know, when I'm in California for Tracy Repchek's event, I'm one of the speakers at that event. Actually, it was just her and I, and um, I'm already out there. So I pushed out, you know, to all the people that are out in California I'm connected to and said, hey, let's get together. Let's have a little meet and greet Thursday night. So, mm -hmm. you know, try to look at what else you can do while you're doing something else at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot I, of people I have a hard that. time with that. You know, they look at, I'm going to go to this conference and that's all yeah. they're focused on. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then they I'm, go to their room. What's up with that? <laughs> I'm going to um, to L.A. in November, and I'm we switched our plans just the other day to go in a day early, just so we because we're going to go meet Vicky out there while we're in L.A. As Gwen's going out with me to this conference, so I was like, well, I'm going out a day early. I'm going to meet Vicky, uh, but then my wife and I are like, okay, then we're going to hang out at the beach. There's things that we I like about L.A. that I want to go do, so I'm going to be out there a day early to do them. And then I'm going to stop by Phoenix on the way back to connect with family. And who knows? I, I'll probably stay there and go up and record one of my radio shows. You know? Yeah, there's nothing like meeting people in person. Yeah. Um, you know, and this is about, you know, getting your message heard. If you don't actually build relationships with people and really trying to help them mm -hmm. get their message out, you know, yeah. you're kind of stuck not moving. <laughs> again, again, it goes back to, all right, don't sit in your house and try to build try to build it. All right, go out and do it. All right. I've done it and that's what I'm gonna keep doing is, is okay, I'm going there. What's it take to schedule it a day early? And uh, I did that in in September and ended up putting a fourth speech into my five days of being there. You know what I mean? Because someone yes. said, hey, by the way, could you uh, come sh share at my ladies' event tonight? I'm like, sure. So. And by the way, um, one of the people asked, you know, where I was going to be in California. Hollywood, of course. <laughs> She's becoming a star. <laughs> Did you? I'm going to be on Hollywood. <laughs> and even the public speakers conference this year, I'm already scheduling it out. I'm almost through with the website public speakers conference and it's going to be in um let's see palm springs california at the hard rock hotel so tim's uh, going to be there sorry, who's, we're getting who's, it all scheduled 
you know, who, who's in the running for one of your speaker spots at that one? I'm just, you know, it's going to be at the Hard Rock. Ooh. <laughs> you already said you're going to be there. It's not in the running. <laughs> Or we kind of had that in the works. We don't have official, now, if you, you know, contract you right now and said, well, maybe Robert will be there speaking too. Then they would be like, whoa, wait a minute. Right. <laughs> Robert and I are going to tag team. Oh, but... I don't want to ruin her event. <laughs> <laughs> ruin it. Wait, Robert, that would not ruin her event. People would come there to see she that. It's a professional event. You and I are. Far, far from, far from, from oh, but you gotta remember, my rule is you don't have to be perfect, so it's really good. <laughs> oh, no, no, it has nothing to do with perfect. It's professional. <laughs> I'm the type that I have the wireless mic and I will jump off the stage and sit in someone's lap and have a conversation with yeah. them and talk. Nice. And, you know, they nice. Call, you know, if, it, if you look at the show, The Voice, I'm like the Blake Shelp. <laughs> you just, uh, give me a red solo cup and you just don't know whatever's gonna happen. <laughs> well, you know, my first event, this is a perfect example of a message gone wrong, okay? Because they can go very wrong. So when, um, Candy, when you're share, looking... Candy asked him, yeah, for you to share about that conference one more time. You know the website, what you said, the website's not up, right? It's it's adjusting. I'm, I'm switching everything over from last year's event mm -hmm. to this year's. So some of it's up, um, some of the information about the venue... But we don't have really the the you know reception is publicspeakersconference.com yep. and I should have it finished today um, before I leave tomorrow for Oregon. Yeah. Miss Candy, um, go sign up for the updates on that because yeah, it's it's a fabulous event she puts on, and I've known many of the speakers from it, and really I would love to see you out there. So I'm going to be there one way or another this year. So I'm yay. sorry. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry, but I've seen her ask that. I want to pitch it because they need to be there. <laughs> Yeah, so it is part of the Public Speakers Association, and you know Tim's definitely a member, and I started it back in 2013, and it's been great. It's been so much fun. You can go and find out more about the association at Public Speakers Association, all spelled out. dot com. Um, but what I was going to say is, at the first conference, I mean, brilliant people. So Les Brown was there, um, Elizabeth McCormick, Patty Farmer. Um, I mean, just Jane Duber. I mean, it was incredible people. So we were all okay. up on stage. We were doing our thing. And then there was a guy that I connected to, and he seemed great. And he came up. Now, there are some times that you make your message you go back. So when I go into the oh, um, right. the conference, he's up on stage. He takes my sign and pulls it up on stage. So this is my actual banner. And he slaps a piece of sticky paper on it that you can't even read because he's like scribbled some stuff on there. And he's like, now everybody, you, all these people that have been speaking, they don't know how to speak and don't buy anything from them. So Les Brown, Elizabeth McCormick, all these incredible people, myself, were on stage before him. And he comes out with that. And people start getting up and leaving. So you have to be very clear about your target market and always edify and never push down people. It's not ever about pushing Ooh. people down. It's about bringing everybody with us. Okay, I was, was about to mention a name, but uh, you know, I know somebody who does that, but he does it as, as an eye catcher and then he turns the conversation around real quick. And, yeah, but, he yeah, did not. This guy, <laughs> I was looking at, but I was about to say a name, but I'm not because I don't want to associate it with the bad because this guy does it and he does it in a way because everybody, everybody perks up and listens when he says that. And then he turns yeah. it around to get your attention. He does that as an attention getter. All right. He, and yeah. he's a speaker. He's used, a, he's used to stand up and his first words are, speaking does not work. Give up. And he does it at <laughs> speakers conferences. And everybody's like, what's the new thing? They, you know, he does it to get people's attention. And he's a good speaker. I think yeah. you know him, but he's in Los Angeles, so. Yeah, you know, this was not that kind of thing. So, you know, and this was, you know, something that I learned for myself. Here it was at my conference, and I did not put anything in my speaker's agreement saying that I could pull somebody off the stage. Mm. And so I had to leave him up there. I was, like, running around going, oh, what can I do? I mean, it was, like, going downhill and then finding out that afterwards he had been hitting on all the women to sleep with him that night. I'm like, really, guy? This is somebody I needed to kick out. And so yeah. you think it's in my agreement now? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just FYI, too. 
I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I, um, and I, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, is uh, a friend of mine had a conference, and he was a gentleman that was in our mastermind um, who who came in with a bad attitude to one of our events, and my friend kicked him out of the mastermind. And, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? He came in with all the pause, all the, the, the – because he just he was having a bad day, and I get it. You know what yeah. I mean? He's not that way normally. Now, I'm speaking uh, – at the end of the conference, I'm sitting there speaking with my friend, and I, and I said, I don't get it. I said, because when I'm here – all right. When I'm on stage, I'm speaking. But when I'm not on stage, I'm here to support you. Everything yeah. I do here is, Tanya, what do you need me to do? How do I help? Where do I go? What do we, you know, it's your yeah. conference. You've got yeah. a million things going through your mind. I'm there to support you doing it. And people have done the and same thing for And why is mine. that such a hard concept for some people? You know, I was really shocked. And, you know, there's been some times that you – I've just been surprised at the reality of some people's world mm -hmm. and how they interact and don't interact. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're at a conference, you're there and you're present the whole time. Yeah. You don't go and hide, you know. Uh, that's just some, you know, protocols that, you know, is kind of expected. So, yeah, I mean, you know, it, we all it, learn. It's, it's their conference. You, you're there to support them. And, and that's it. I mean, if I'm at something with Roberts, I know Robert's coming to Dallas. And when he's here, I'm probably going to be there all day and supporting him. him and he says, Tim, I need you to go run the printers for me. I'm going to go do it. Uh, I'm so, sending yeah. you for coffee and food. Uh, <laughs> Yay! <laughs> he, he, yeah, he, he jokes. But Actually, he's just going to hold the phone and be the periscope stand. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll, probably, oh, I'll probably go do it, right? Well, Aaron Smith's in the room. Aaron Smith will know. She's actually seen me do a lot of conferences. But... Yeah, and by the way, did you know that Aaron Smith is speaking in Dallas? Today? No, at my event. I know. Oh, okay. I didn't know if you knew she was going to be there. That's yeah. Right. I know you kind of know each other. So. She's, I just called her last night because I have a monthly thing I'm doing here that I'm, I'm going to have her speak at again. So, I mean, Kim, she's awesome. I know she and is. And she's going to speak about Aaron. how to. You... I need to know Aaron. Aaron is the one that's called the Starters Club. Okay. Aaron's oh. speaking at your Plano chapter tomorrow, Tanya. <laughs> Well, obviously, I haven't had a good conversation with Aaron. Aaron. <laughs> but she's speaking for you. So you must Aaron, come on in, Aaron. Aaron, grab Join a seat. A seat. <laughs> grab a seat, Aaron. Now you got to come in. I was going to say, I'm not even in the association. <laughs> Robert, let me know how I can support oh. your um, conference, too. Hey, Aaron. <laughs> hey, kiddo. How are you? Good morning. Good morning, Aaron. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. Did and you get a new mic? mic? No, I've always had this. This is my podcast mic, but I just don't use it all the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah. I'm speaking today again, so I got to get like energy. I'm tired today. Right. Come on, Aaron. You can do it. You can do it. You can do no, it. No, I need more coffee. But yeah, yeah, Tanya, I haven't actually talked to you yet, but I am in this uh, public speaker association through a group. So yeah. Perfect. Well, your name sounded familiar, but I'm like, I've, I've, yeah. no, I know. you know, we need to talk. Yeah, no, I know. I need to get on your schedule for the uh, teleseminar and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. So remember, everyone, October 26th and 27th is our Women's Summit, and we're looking for presenters right now. So just go no, to publicspeakersassociation.com under the members tab at the end. It says schedule summit and just add yourself in there. Um, pick the day, time, and then tell us what you want to speak about. So um, we're looking for speakers for that. Perfect. Oh, so, yay. Uh, but and, yeah, and you told me yesterday I need to send a message on you. I, I got your like seven other emails yesterday, and in my I only have 151, 161, 10 more just popped in left. So I'll get to them, I promise. No worries. I wanted to connect you and make sure yeah. that people knew about you. There's a lot of people so. you connected me to yesterday, and I appreciate that. They're just they're good people. Always, you know, that's one of the things that everyone that's listening, you know, we're talking about getting your message heard. And if you're keeping it all to yourself and not telling people what you speak about, mm -hmm. you, how good is that? You know, so really, I, one of the things that always shocks me is people that I'm a speaker, but nowhere on their website, on social media, anywhere do they say that they're a speaker, what they speak on. I mean, it's like this, you know, hidden gem. I'm like, you got to get out there and let people know how fabulous you are. <laughs> 
No, I was just saying that to somebody yesterday because I was on another and I'm just start. I'm just getting started with the whole thing. And I've found just even by putting it out there, I'm, hey, I'm looking for speaking opportunities. Does anybody know of anybody? And you talk mm -hmm. to somebody and they've got some ideas for you. And it's it's a great way to get the wheel turning because it's the hardest thing when you're just starting. You're like, OK, what do I do next? Like, where do mm -hmm. I go? How do I do this? But I've found even just by hey, I see you're speaking. How did you get started? And, you know, oh, well, let me give this opportunity for you. It's just been a really great way to get the ball yeah. rolling. Yeah. And there's a lady down here in Austin that look, is looking for some women speakers. She has a women's organization. So remind me to connect you to her. Okay, awesome. You know, and, and one of the things that I think was um, kind of pivot, pivotal into me launching a speaking career was in 2010, I was like, okay, I'm gonna be a speaker. How do I tell people that this is what I'm doing now? And so I went out and took a picture of myself with a microphone, you know, one of the little wireless ones. Remember when you take a picture with a microphone, face it away from your face because it does become a phallic symbol, just FYI. Um, so I had my, you know, little face with the microphone People still to this day talk about that picture. It went, it was like crazy the amount of people that were like, oh my gosh, I didn't know you were speaking. And I mean, it was like all of a sudden just everybody knew because of that picture, right? Yeah. All over social media. So sometimes it's, it's a visual works just as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a good point. I never thought of that. So yeah, I just did, I do a headshot at least every year sometimes every six months i try to rebrand and so i just i hadn't had a picture with a microphone in a while so i just did a bunch of pictures and you know it's just a nice reminder plus you can use it on speaker sheets and on your banners you know mm -hmm. so one of the things i suggest if you do the uh, everybody starts off you kind of do the chamber speech and you, you get out there and you do your little freebies to the small things film them all yeah yeah and now you can make a little sizzle reel mm -hmm. and that's something now you can email or send to people that are looking for speakers mm -hmm. doesn't yeah, have to be know, the most professional thing start with i mean though the iphone is an amazing camera so it looks professional and you can edit without you know and erin and i have discussed editing and everything else and you literally can put this little sizzle reel together and send it to people and now yeah. all of a sudden it's like oh she does do speaking even yeah. though it might have been small groups, you're still speaking. You're in front of people, standing, yeah. being active, talking. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and another thing you can do, when I first started speaking, um, I needed some products to sell. So I did a series. I had like four speaking gigs. Like one was at the Lions Club and another one was at the Rotary. <laughs> you know, you've got all these right. little things. Yep. And I did a different presentation each time. And I just got one of those little small, you know, um, recorders, right, on, off. And I put it in a little pouch and I, you know, put it onto my belt and just got a little lapel mic and I recorded each one. And now I had a little series that I could sell at the back of a room. Mm -hmm. And so those kind of things are easy to do. And the MP3s, you know, can easily be put onto a CD. And, you know, so you know, you think about things, how do you multiply out your opportunities and get that message heard even, you know, even faster, especially if you're doing, you know, the rotary, you know, take that 30 minutes and turn it into money making. Yeah. I think the biggest hurdle I had to get over was you overthink the products. You know what I mean? You're like, really? Yeah, Would somebody buy 30 minutes? You know what I mean? Like you, and people love it. They totally, yeah. if you're giving great, valuable information, they're interested. And I think that's where I had to get out of my own head to believe what people, what was worth purchasing. You know what I mean? And you're right. Like, don't let these things go wasted time. You know, if you're giving valuable yeah. information, if it's worth it, package it up, sell it. And yeah. you've already done it. So you might I as well, it, yeah. you know, yeah, you, 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 you talked it. The interesting Aaron said, Aaron just said, you know, you're not sure if people are going to like it, why would you, and I'm going to use the word that we should never use, assume it. If you put it out there to sell and it doesn't sell, fine. But if you put it out there and five people buy it, that's five people that bought it. It could be a hundred people. You don't know. Don't answer for other people. Yeah. I agree. You know, exactly. You get that assumption in your head that, 
oh, nobody will get it. Or it's kind of, you know, like the naysayers when you start your own business. Oh, what are you, nuts? You can't start a business. Now the <laughs> yeah. economy's bad. Yeah. It's the worst time in the world. It's the same thing you do when you self-doubt yourself. You're mm -hmm. putting those images, yeah. you're putting those things in your head. It's kind of like people that go to speak for the first time. Mm -hmm. oh, they yeah. start, oh, I can, you know, do you turn to somebody, you could do the speaking. You should be telling your story. Oh, no, I can't do that. It's like, why? Yeah, go to a toastmaster, go to a class, learn to calm your nerves and do stuff and everything else, and then you can. Yep. Come to Public Speakers Association. We let you practice all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. And like to your point, Robert, if five people buy it, it's free money. Like you did it. It's not like you made an extra effort like to spend more. You utilize the time you had. It's I look at that. That's bonus money, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even for, you know, I mean, one of the things that's hard for people that I do, and I think that's why, you know, when I created the Public Speakers Association, it was from all of the people going, Tanya, how are you making money, you know, at speaking? I don't get it. And I'm like, it's just a business. You yeah. know, you, you put it in and you find out what do people really want? Mm -hmm. What do they what are they asking you for? If they're asking you, there's a need there and there's a desire to purchase mm -hmm. something. So listen to what people are asking you, you know, yeah. <laughs> and stop thinking, oh, I want to sell, you know, hamsters when they're asking, you know, about guinea pigs. You know? <laughs> yeah. Right. No, I remember I wanna... the first, uh, the first time I ever sold informational products in the room. And I remember one of them was an ebook I had. Uh, the other one was, I think I had, two or three like PDF things. I put them on a CD, I made a label, put it on there and I made five of them. I was speaking in a room of yeah. 20 people and they they ran to the table to buy them all. You know I remember I mean? that moment in 2010 and y'all probably had this experience mm -hmm. where I gave a presentation and it was my first time to pitch, you know? Mm -hmm. And I saw all these people jumping up and running to the back. And I had stationed my husband back there. And he was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. People were, like, running. And I was like, wow, this really does work. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and I had a very good uh, week last week. I mean, you know, for me, uh, I did a Wednesday speech to small. I think there were 10 ladies in, in, the, in the room. Uh, five people, five of them uh, invested in the package I had. And uh, then um, Friday I did my work, my one day workshop that I do. And uh, this is the first time I'm ever going to show this on a recording. Um, all five got into my mastermind. All five. See? I mean, uh, there was a time I was like, I can't sell one. Well, I love your story about uh, um, Zig at the coffee shop. Yeah. Telling you to get into speaking, and you're like, "Yeah, I'll cut my hair, I'll get the suit." And he's like, "What are you nuts?" Yeah, be yourself. Yeah, be yourself. So. Yeah, and it's interesting too because I've I love giving people their start in speaking. That's I think that's why I naturally gravitated mm -hmm. to starting the association. And one of my friends, Patty Farmer, she's a seven figure speaker now. And I remember in 2010, I was like, you have to get into the speaking. It's awesome. And she's like, I don't know. I don't know if I could do that, mm -hmm. you know. And I pushed her to be a part of a little, you know, gathering that we had like 30 people in the room. And she was hooked, right? Mm -hmm. And from that moment of, I can't believe people are like handing me their credit cards, you know. Because <laughs> when you resonate with the, the audience and you resonate with what they're saying to you that they want and you're giving them what they want, it's magic. Mm -hmm. And it's got to so, be about the message. So yeah. Miss Candy blog down there asked a question, and I think maybe, uh, Tanya, I want to hear your uh, your way to address this. Uh, but, I mean, to get into speaking, uh, Miss Candy, I would, would attend one of her local chapter meetings, first of all, as well as other things that are out there for speakers. But, Tanya? Yeah, I've got a, even a global chapter. The chapter meetings are great, and it's great networking. But realistically, most of what we do is on the Internet. So it's very much about marketing you and getting your message heard. Because if no one's ever heard of you and no one knows what you speak about, you're not going to get booked. 
And I'm constantly like, I just sent out seven speaking opportunities the other day. You know, it's about getting you in front of the people that have radio shows, TV shows, conferences for associations, corporate conferences, TED Talks, you know, you name it. If you're opening your mouth, I want to find those opportunities for you. Um, and then we've got ones that we create ourselves, you know. So if you go to public speakers with an S, association, all spelled out, dot com, um, you can find out all the things that we're offering. I'm going to be doing more of these blabs. Again, it's about getting people's messages out, you know. Now Aaron and I have, you know, we know each other now. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's about connecting ourselves. And I have such a huge connection base to, you know, the top speakers that you need to know, but who mm -hmm. have great leveraging for you, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's about connecting people to each other so that you have movement. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if you're just an emerging speaker. I love emerging speakers, but even if you're a six and seven figure speaker, there's something that we can help you with because it's all about mm -hmm. marketing. Yeah. But, you know, and Tim's, I think it was on your radio show yesterday. Um, you asked me, you know, who do I love listening to? And to be honest with you, the people where it's their first time to speak and they're on one of my virtual summits because we do one every single month, that gives me so much joy mm -hmm. when they it's that first time they got to give their message, whatever mm -hmm. that message is. And you just, you see the butterflies all bubbling up inside of them and you see the nerves, you get to hear it in their voice um, and you see them do it anyways. Yeah. I, it gives me so much joy. <laughs> well, I'll tell you a little secret about that because you, you're you saying watching the first one is I know James Malinchek fairly closely. And James tells the story every time from his stage. As experienced as he is, he always has butterflies before he goes on stage every time. And he's big money speaker. Well, and if you look at, I mean – even any speaker, that first five, even up to 10 minutes is them getting that butterflies out, you know, getting themselves in their groove. Mm -hmm. And and you can just see that transformation when it happens. It's like, poof, they're in it, right? And it does it for me every time because I still have my introvertness that pulls out. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're just now joining us, we've got the fabulous Tim Gillette here online who has a fabulous radio show. Tim, tell us about your radio show. I do a radio show every Tuesday at uh, 11 a.m. Central. Uh, actually, two of the people in the squares have been on my radio show. One of them will be. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of these do not be long? Yeah. Uh, but it's TimGilletteRadio.com. We'll let you know all about it. And uh, we're on the Rockstar Worldwide Network. And uh, we're a worldwide internet radio station with over 5 million listeners. And I found out recently I'm in the top 10% of shows on the network. So... Yay! I was excited about Yay, that. Yay, so, that's awesome. Yeah. That's uh, just great. go on there and have fun, okay? Uh, Aaron, when you were on my show, was I anything but just, hey, let's have fun? Yeah, no, you're yeah. totally cool. Yeah, but then you're everybody was about like, me. I know. But then <laughs> afterwards, everybody's like, <laughs> I learned so much. I'm going to ignore him. I'm ignoring him. <laughs> we'll, we'll block him. Yeah, Aaron, block Aaron's him. not even worried about me on her show. She's just afraid it may go long. <laughs> no, actually, well, oh, no, no. no. Uh, I need no. to have you on. I know, I need to get that. I've not been scheduling. I've kind of been like. Aaron, you have a show? Yeah, it's, it's a, podcast. a podcast. I don't do a radio show, but yeah, The Starters Club. Nice. Everything pretty, How can people find out about club. that? What was that? How can people find out about your podcast? Oh, just go to iTunes or um, or Stitcher, or you can find it on the website. Everything is The Starters Club. So nice. Really Perfect. easy, yeah. How about but you? Yeah, I. Go ahead. Oh, how about you, Robert? Do you have something that people can tune into? We just started a podcast. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> Tim's already got his head down and laughing. I think Aaron dropped by it once too. Um, no, I'm actually answering a, a text. So. Oh, okay. No, Aaron, uh, Vicky Fitch and myself, she's on the West Coast, started a podcast about a week ago called He Said, Red Said. We are both social media trainers and coaches. And uh, Vicky and I are the typical um, amazing friends that we met on live streaming, love each other dearly, but you would swear to God we're either brother, sister, or divorced couple because the way we go at each other in banter is hysterical. <laughs> I, brother, sister, or divorced couple. There's just something. Aaron's seated. Aaron's seated, too. Easy with yeah. that. I know. I know. 
true. It's true, but it's just fine. Well, either we're brothers or sisters are divorced. I can't disagree. But they're having a very, uh, shall we say, uh, big uh, football game. Yeah, that's turned into a huge thing. So, so we got three episodes done. We got more episodes on the way, and then we'll ship it into iTunes and everything else. So, so the second episode, Vicky turns around and goes, "We were talking." One of the guys came on, and said something about football, and he goes, "Oh, Vicky went into great. We're going to talk football." She goes, "I used to quarterback," and I went, "Yeah, okay, I believe that one." She goes, "No, in sixth grade, I quarterback." So all of a sudden, this turned into we're going to have a flag football game. Uh-huh. And we're going to do it before Periscope Summit on January thirteenth in San Francisco. Well, since announcing saying we were going to do that, and Twitter is a buzz right now because we're all like scrambling to find who's going to be Team Robert and who's going to be <laughs> Team Red. And Tim has graciously decided to sponsor the T-shirts for the two teams, so there nice. will be a Team Red shirt and there will be a Team Robert shirt. And those now, when we get the designs ready, it'll have the he said red set on the back caricature with Tim's company sponsoring. And in the front, we'll either say Team Robert, Robert or Team Red. Thank you, Rocker Life. For, uh, and there's Danielle. Good. Erin's got to make a decision before we leave this thing. I know. You guys, this is pressure. I don't know. Uh, Can I no, be that's already been Switzerland. Switzerland. Alex, Kahn, Adam, a- a- Alex Kahn already turned around and said, I'm Switzerland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't want to pick between you two. I so, like you both so much. The T-shirts are going to be available on the website that we're setting up so that all the profits – are going to we're talking to the make a wish foundation this is fabulous nice. that they that's like we should call and they made it happen i love it and so make a wish is in the process of talking with us and we're talking with national because we may turn this into they may get some football people there they may get some other so now it's turning into we thought like you know go down half hour 40 minutes we'll go play if it's raining it's in the mud we'll get dirty go home it might be turning to like a, a full like half day event Nice with restaurants coming in and all the profits going to make a wish foundation and stuff. So it's set up for Jan- wow. January 13th, the day before Periscope Summit. So this way we can get people that are actually going to play in the game. They'll all come in early and anybody else can come in early a day early, which is not a bad thing to do because now that we've all experienced um, Summit, we may need an extra night's rest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was, it was an experience, right, Aaron? <laughs> yeah. I love it when people it just fun, kind of, yeah. you just kind of go with fun. something and then it just blows up into this huge, you know, activity. They're you like, what happened? How did that happen? Game. We just said, we'll have a football game again. It's got to be five girls and five guys on the team. So now it's blown up into this. I mean, Vicky yesterday. Oh my God. She's reaching out. Brian Fanzo, you got to be team red. Uh, Ibang Ika, you got to be team. Christian uh, Kata, who played for Arizona State, got to be team red. Yeah. I, I mean, he, she's like going <laughs> ballistic on this. So I'm sitting there going, all right, she wants to play this game? You play this game. So oh, I went out and got the Perry girl leader, Joanne, and her boyfriend who used to play football, Spam, Rice and Spam. So I'm like, this has turned into like a huge competition. No yeah. bragging rights only. Yeah. And then, you know, you know, some, I look at it this way. Who's going to win the whole thing? Make a wish. Make a wish. Exactly. I love oh. that. How exciting. I, I want well, to make this periscope and pitch you yesterday. I, yeah, I heard, I heard you went on and you were like, don't pick Team Red, pick Team Robert. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. That is great. All right, everyone, make sure you support Robert on that. Be be part of his Team Robert. <laughs> hashtag he said, Red said, hashtag Team Robert. Yeah. Nice, nice. <laughs> I like that. I'm with Tanya, though. I love it when it just is like something simple. Hey, let's do this. It's It'll be, and then all of a sudden it <laughs> – it, yeah. yeah, it's a blow up and it's cool and it's for good. Cause. good. Great car. Um, you know, a lot of times too, when cause, you absolutely. when you create something, you really don't know how it's going to gel together. You know, when mm-hmm. I did the public speakers conference and um, and the first one was in 2014, um, I was shocked because I've been putting on a conference every single year since 2006, and I've done all these little small events, you know, hundreds of them since then. It was the very first conference that I've ever been to that I felt like I was a part of my own conference versus just putting on a conference. Yeah. 
And it was like one of those very heart centered moments for myself that I'm like, I'm in the right crowd, right? These, these are my peeps. These are people that get me and we're not here to, you know, kind of show one each other off or, you know, it's all there to help each other. And I love it when things like that just kind of naturally happen. You're like, wow. <laughs> Mm-hmm. No, it's it's. it's uh, and I didn't think it was going to get as big as. I mean, now we got people saying we'll we'll try to contact ESPN and CNN Sports, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, guys, whoa. this is three months away. How can we create this thing in three months? <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna become a yearly thing, Robert. You watch, and it's three weeks before Super Bowl. Yeah. Oh, that's fun too. Yeah, that's going to be other attracting. And the Periscope, <laughs> the Periscope Summit weekend actually. They actually picked the wrong weekend because that's the NFC and AFC championship games that weekend. <laughs> I mean, it's the ones that decide who are going to the Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> so I was a little surprised. Um, I was like, when I heard that, and I'm like, wait a minute. Um, that could be an important weekend for some fans. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I remember when I had my retail store, it was a Sunday, it was the Super Bowl, and I was, you know, working, it was a Sunday, I had to work, I had the stores open, and this guy came rushing in, he had to buy a present, and he was like, oh, I gotta get this, I gotta get back, you know, the Super Bowl started, he goes, aren't you closing? And I'm like, closing for what? I didn't even know the Super Bowl was on that day. <laughs> when all the women shop. Exactly, I'm like, Aaron, I don't know what you're tells talking about. me you're watching the Super Bowl. Oh, I mean, yeah, no, because the Packers will be playing. So, of course, I'll be watching this. Oh, you're Bowl. another Packer girl. I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm from Wisconsin. Because Lori Mowers is a huge Packers fan. Yes. I don't know Lori. Lori you don't know Lori? Lori's, yeah, Lori's in around scope. She's uh, with Origami Al, and she's um, oh, okay. out of yes, a small. Yes, 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 I know who she is now. Yes. Yeah, because she's, she's, she's almost like... every one of my blabs, so. Okay. Nice. Must, Tracy Lee's like, there, yeah. too. Awesome. Yeah, there's tons <laughs> of people, see? Yeah. Packer, I'm a huge, you I'm, should do a blab, Packer Nation. You should have many people show up. <laughs> get the message out. Get your message heard on, you know, about Packers. Exactly. I guess those are football people, right? <laughs> exactly. No, but yeah, for sure. I, I I watch Super Bowl even if they're not on, like, but mm-hmm. um I, I have a feeling we'll be there this year. So just saying. <laughs> just saying. saying. Unless they play uh Seattle to get in again. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a little rough, but I know that was a rough one last year. It was like, what the hell just yeah, happened? Yeah, that just like, sucked. That was bad. Yeah. But it's that's funny, okay. Because my family, all the women are sports fanatics. I mean, my mother would have the TV show. The TV would be on, you know, the football. The little tiny TV back, you know, back when um, was on and like tennis. baseball and the radio would be on, <laughs> you know, basketball. It was crazy none of the guys in my family care about sports at all so it's so backwards that's funny <laughs> no my brother could care less but my sister and i are both my sister's a little gone a little crazy on the sports side but that's okay <laughs> um awesome uh, okay cool well, perfect so well, what do I'm you gonna... usually speak about aaron when you go and speak um so i was just telling tim i typically speak about like just social media in general. So my thing is really helping people go from concept to getting profitable in your business. So those first couple of years, see, we got a lot of Packer fans in here too, mm-hmm. but, um, they followed I, you. Yeah. And you yeah, exactly. follow you. I got some new followers, <laughs> but, um, sorry, my kids are running here, but, um, <laughs> what I've been just because even I've been doing like the rotary circuit and all that. And even when I do like the how to kind of figure out a social media strategy type of thing, everybody keeps asking me about live streaming. That's where all the questions go. So um, I've just been talking a lot about live streaming specifically, like how to get, how do you make it work? How to put the strategy behind it? I just spoke at podcast Dallas last night, like how to get, um, and sorry if you can hear what like the dogs are getting fed and it's like chaos. Here. But um, kids, dogs, it's like it's real life. It's like the one it's moment right. I speak, everybody's like, wow. So um, I've just been doing a lot of live streaming. Like last night I talked about how to use live streaming to grow your podcast, like how you can pull in the blabs and the periscopes to start building your audience. Uh, so and that's what I'm going to another rotary here. I'll have to bounce. And that's what I'm going to be talking about. So that's been more specifically, but just in general, how to kind of generate numbers, social media, everything around really building. I help the people who 
haven't, they can't quite afford to hire out a ton of people to do it for them yet. So how do you start doing it yourself? Mm-hmm. And Love then it. pass them off to people when they can hire. She said, Tim, once you tell everybody what, what you speak on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I speak on how to build, how to take take your personal story, build your personal brand, and then use a blog to get message and content about you on on the web. Uh, my system is called Rock Around Your Blog. How to use a blog to build your business. Nice. And how about you, Robert? I'm a social media uh, strategist and trainer and coach. I help companies, and when I get up and speak, it's specifically if I get up and speak, we try to find out what subject they want and. Um, just about what social do, media in general. What do you find that people are mostly wanting right now? Well, I mean, live streaming obviously is the biggest thing right now because it's the new shiny object. It's, you know, they're right. afraid, you know, the small companies are afraid of missing out the FOMO and the large companies are doing what they normally do and sitting back and watching. Right. Though they're starting to see there's things going on that they better get their grip. They, they better get in fast because it may be hard for them afterwards. Because the big thing is, I'll tell you, it's it's about live streaming and what live streaming brings to the table for brands and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, influencer marketing. Love it. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, and, and by the way, everybody, I'm Tanya Hoffman. I'm the CEO and founder of the Public Speaker Association and Career Speaker Academy. And my kitten is attacking me right now. Say hello. She is Aww. so bad right now. She's, just, mm. she's like, oh. Say hello to everybody. This is Frappe. She's first oh my god, Frappuccino. Cool. Um, but yeah, you know when I speak Aaron, about Erin just melted. She was like, "Oh my god, I, know. <laughs> I don't need another animal." Yeah. Oh, my daughter good, brings yeah. her home and says, "Mommy, look what I got for you." <laughs> <laughs> I like the way she just goes, "Look." <laughs> it's like a and the cat's like ah. she's my prop this is my prop and she's like ah leave me alone <laughs> that's what she gets for attacking that my small. feet right oh yeah i've got another very large one in the house but um so i speak on you know speaking business of speaking really it's about how you're going to make money how you're going to monetize your message and then i do a lot of leadership training um you know because a lot of people don't know how to build relationships and leverage relationships so i do a lot of that so if you need any speakers you can find all of us except for robert sorry robert um Soon. on the public speakers association.com <laughs> Yeah. So, he will. Tomorrow, you I will be him. involved. Yay. And so um, go to the speaker search and in the, you know, there's a little blog that you can search for people. You can put Tim, you can put Aaron, you can put Tanya and we'll, our little ads pop up. So you'll get our websites, all of our contact, all of our social media, what we speak on. So if you're looking for a speaker for your radio show, for your blab, um, just reach us on there for your next conference coming up. We'd love to help you out. Right, guys? Right. Yes. Awesome people. And I'm yes. sure you can find Robert on all of these incredible opportunities here on Blab and Periscope and everywhere just, else, I'm sure. <laughs> just on Blab. You'll find Robert. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Aaron. Just put in Robert in Google Periscope, and he pops up. Blab, whatever. Exactly. Just do Rob. It's all you don't even need Robert C. Stern. Everybody, I remember one time on Periscope, somebody's like, Why do you keep saying Robert C. Stern? Like, just because it's yeah. Robert C. Stern. But <laughs> see stern it's just robert no well no robert plus blab i'll let you know how much this guy's on on blab is okay talk about him when he's not in the room watch how fast he gets in the room <laughs> tim, the, other, the other day tim was in a meeting i know we all got to do things tim was yeah. in a blab a couple of times and he was saying something about how he was with me in a blab and we were talking about this and he would say like a a quick remark because we're always jabbing at each other five minutes i'm in the room i go he lets me in the window. He's like, what? He goes, I heard you were talking about me. <laughs> the whole room goes. <laughs> I, got I said, I actually have a mini blab window that watches all the blabs. So when I hear my name. <laughs> it's like, oh, I got to get another one. <laughs> I love it. That's but awesome. Better than that. I sent him a text this morning. Hey, yeah, I just got up. Uh, Cause him and I got to have, we got to have, have a talk here this morning. We had a talk and the, he, I'm texting him. Later. He's not answering back, and then all of a sudden I get notification. I said, "You're on a blab, and you just woke up." <laughs> yeah, he's I'm like, like you're, me. He you back. "You're in blabs." Like next thing he does, he pops in the room. Oh my gosh! Just don't do that. I've had people like 
when I first got on blab, I had somebody jump on, like, don't do the blabs from bed, like where you wake up and you roll over and open your phone and you're like, I'm going to join. Don't do that. No. Just, yeah. Just wake up. Get well, dressed. you can join the blab in the just chat. Don't, yeah, don't yeah, get in the camera. Just, yeah. just don't get on camera. Yeah. No, we're talking camera. I agree. Yeah. You know, with these Stand people up. that are in their beds, I'm like, y'all get, get out yeah. of bed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm cool I, with pajamas. I'm all right with pajamas. I'm cool with that showering. Just, we just had one of up. those together. I remember <laughs> something. It was either a periscope or it, when I, I did something with Erin, I remember. Maybe on a blab I saw her or something. You were in your PJs and it was hysterical. Probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have no shame in that, but yeah. She had, well, well actually, I, she had no, it wasn't full, but it was pajama pants. Yes. I've been pants. on events <laughs> yeah. where, I mean, I do a lot of Zoom.us, you know, events yeah. where you get 25 people on at one time and we're all conversing. So we're doing networking and it was, you know, international networking. So, but there was like out of 25 people, there was probably three women, including me. So there was a lot of guys on there and the lady was coming on. We couldn't, she didn't have her name on the little, you know, who she was. And she was having a hard time with her camera. And then all of a sudden it fell because you saw she had some type of shirt on, and then it fell, and she had no bottoms on. I mean, nothing. Oh. And all of a sudden, all of us went. And it oh was my gosh! I mean, all the whole recorded. room of guys, and everyone was like, "Oh was, yeah." And I'm assuming oh, you were recorded. recording because that's part of Zoom. Oh yes, yeah. of course I was recording. <laughs> I had to go in and clip that all out. It was a pain. <laughs> well, I don't know wow. if you know know Mia Voss. Mia, yes. Mia, go go to go to. Uh, I forgot how she puts it. Go on the go or whatever. She told me her story about, and she did it on on a live broadcast and stuff. So I know it's okay to repeat it. She did her first Google Plus, which she was very big on before she's moved over to Blab. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she was doing her Mia on the go, and it was it was her first one, and she's getting ready. She had it set up. And she didn't know it clicks in when it goes to go on. Because this is before kind of the Hangouts on Air, but it was you know, mm -hmm. with the YouTube, but it was before that. They're doing this huge thing. <laughs> she came over to the camera and she sat down. She was topless. <laughs> did she not realize she was topless or what? She run around getting ready. She put a shirt, I guess, by the chair. She did stuff, blah, blah, blah. And she just sat down like, to, you know, and, and the camera went on. There has been too many times that my camera has fallen because of the cats and stuff. I'm like, no, I'm I'm gonna be ready. <laughs> and I said, me. Yeah. Now we understand why you had a hit show for four years. <laughs> you start off, off like that. that. <laughs> exactly. That's hilarious. Wow. wow. We're just talking about you don't have to be super professional, but just put some pants on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Robert and I rank professional above that. Just you know, for the record, you know, even though we're not professional, I we get my above jeans that. on. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I wear the workout pants even though I have no intentions of working out. So, they're just, <laughs> they're just <laughs> perfect. <laughs> All righty. Okay. Well, we're going to wrap up because I have got to jump on another yeah, show really. and um, that I promised I would be on. So, I thank everyone for showing up. We're going to go.